Hello everyone, I'm Curious, and today we're going to be looking at the Game Face Tryon. The Tryon has quickly become my favorite blaster in this form factor. You know, the standard pump action springer that started with kitted out retaliators and goes all the way up to Nexus Pro and the Harrier and everything that we're seeing recently. I just really like the look and the ergonomics and the amount of power you get for the price. And it's just a really nice blaster to use. Of course, if you want to spend a little bit more money, the Harrier is a good option as well, but I like the look of this blaster better. I like the ergonomics a little better, and the one thing it has that the Harrier doesn't is just the opening into the breech. So you can see your ammo, you can fix jams a little easier, and you can even load single darts into the blaster pretty easily. Now it comes with the two spring spacers that'll push it up to about 200, but what I've discovered is that you can actually push the spacers even farther, and mine is shooting around 230 with a piece here that is a little longer than both spacers put together. This is just some PEX tubing. Half inch CPVC is about the same size. And um, this is about two and a half or close to three spacers almost. And it still primes and fires fine. And it hits 220 to 230, depending on your darts. I do like the spring is a lot easier to swap on the Trion than the Harrier, but that's not a huge deal. So there's one big problem with the Trion that I've seen a lot of people having. It happened to me when this was a newer blaster. I've seen it happen to at least five other people in the middle of Nerf Wars. Is you can prime the blaster and then pull the trigger and nothing happens because the catch is actually locked up. And that's because this blaster works differently than every other plunger, springer, and it has a unique issue where if it catches the way you'd expect a normal blaster to catch, that's bad <laughs> because then it won't fire. Um, you can just pull the trigger over and over and it just clicks as if you haven't primed it even though it's primed and ready to shoot and you can't get it to shoot. And that's just due to the unique catch geometry and how they've got this thing working and it's actually very easy to fix. So that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to show you how the internals work and show you why that problem happens and how to fix it very easily. So let's open this blaster up. So the only semi-tricky part about opening it up is the clips that you got on the top of here. And then you have two more clips up here at the little buffer tube. And you don't actually have to take any screws out of the grip because it's on the inside of the main body clamshell. Just gotta pop these little clips in the back, which is not super difficult. Probably want to start with this one. There we go. That's open, and of course I missed a screw right here. I couldn't see it from my angle. Okay, now we got it open. And the trigger likes to pop out when you open it, but it's not a huge deal. So the only thing that I've modded about the blaster is I've added a bearing scar and this mass of tape up here just to keep the barrel in place because um, removing the front orange piece removes the thing that's keeping the barrel from moving forward on you. And um, I needed a, a new like block, so I just made one out of tape. That was super easy. And the spacer that I added. That's, that's all I've changed on this blaster. So here's the Tryon's catch mechanism, which is a really weird design that works differently from any other Springer that you may have seen before. Um, I've taken out the catch, trigger, and 
slam fire mech springs just so I can uh, manipulate it and show you how it works. So you prime the blaster, the plunger comes back, and the catch locks like you would expect. But at this point, the catch isn't actually what is holding the plunger tube back. The plunger rod here has a ramp surface right at the catch. And what this whole system's trying to do is force its way past the catch instead of having the catch be moved out of the way and then let it go. If I put this back in place, in the prime position, the catch is actually kept in place by this little sear and trigger combination, which is kind of locked like this. As soon as you pull the trigger, it gets out of the way of the sear, which is then allowed to rotate upward here, and the plunger can force the whole catch downward and go. Now, the problem with that, of course, is that if this actually catches like a regular blaster, because the new catch surface on the catch is sharp enough to just hold this, especially against a higher spring tension, this isn't going anywhere. It's going to just get stuck and you've pulled the trigger, you've gotten the whole sear out of the way of the catch, but because the catch is actually catching the plunger, it's stuck and the trigger now does nothing, and neither does the sear. A good way to unjam this when you're on the field, when you're kind of stuck, is to reprime the blaster using the, the prime lock so that you can actually pull the whole thing back again. Right. Whoop, there we go. So you can actually prime it again, and then just kind of hold the trigger down so that nothing is in the way of the catch and slam it forward like you were going to slam fire it and that usually will release the plunger and let it go but you'll still have the same issues when you primed again if your trion is acting up like this so what you got to do to fix this is actually really simple so you'll want to take this little edge that might be too sharp on your brand new trion and gets locked and just kind of take a sharp knife or maybe a file and just kind of scrape it along this edge to trim it down just a little bit and that's kind of all you need if you're trying on still having problems you just kind of keep shaving off just a little bit and that is usually enough to fix it and you can also add a little bit more lubricant to the catch something else that's counterintuitive the trion actually wants its catch to be lubed because of how it works and that might fix it as well. So once you've done that, everything works as it should. The thing gets pulled back, the catch locks in place, because the trigger is under tension, it is sitting here and it forces the sear in the way so that the catch can't actually move down without popping the sear out of there, which won't happen if the blaster is closed, obviously. So the plunger can't go anywhere. But as soon as the trigger is pulled, the sear is out of the way, and this plunger can just go and force the catch right out of its way. But yeah, just sanding down that little surface a bit and lubing it up will stop the catch jamming issue. Another way to fix it is just to slam fire the Trion like a few hundred times <laughs> and just break in the internals so that it doesn't have a sharp surface that is catching the whole blaster like that. It's just that sometimes when you have a high spring pressure here and the spring up here, it doesn't want to release because it's built backwards from every other spring powered blaster that you've seen before. Now because of this weird geometry, the slam fire actually works differently than any other blaster like this too. And you may have noticed on your Trion, there we go, if your blaster's primed, right, and you pull the trigger, it's already moved the sear out of the way. And the slam fire mech is now the only thing in the way of the catch. So you don't even have to hold the trigger anymore. You can let go of the trigger. And as soon as the slam fire mech returns to the forward position, it will let the plunger go. So you have this weird thing where you can prime it, just click the trigger and then prime it forward and it fires, which Again, works differently from every other slam fire blaster. Right, so I'm just going to put the blaster back together. Okay, just to show off the spacer that I'm using here. It is about as long as three 
of the standard spacers. Maybe a little bit shorter. And that is priming and firing just fine and getting a nice FPS boost out of this thing. And I actually like the iron size that it comes with. And I'll show you in a second that it can be pretty accurate when you use those sights. All right, so the last is back together. And just to show off the slam fire weirdness I was talking about. So with normal blasters, you got to hold the trigger down the whole time you're priming it in order for it to slam fire. But with the game face, try on, see it's primed back. If I just pull the trigger, now the trigger has been pulled. It doesn't care anymore whether you're holding it. And you push the handle forward all the way, it just shoots. Because the trigger's already moved the sear out of the way. And the catch is just waiting for that slam fire bar to get out of the way as well for it to fire. Now let's do some demonstrations. Okay, so I'm at the back end of my basement, about 40 feet away from the targets, and I just wanted to show off how accurate this thing can be with a bearing scar. I just got a Talon mag full of darts on pro darts. There we go. I'm going to start with the rival target just to kind of side in, and then I'm going to see if I can hit the cups one after another. So close. There we go. Yeah, so I missed a few times, but you can see the dart's getting really close. I was just aiming a little bit high for a lot of those shots. But that'll tell you just the kind of accuracy you can get with a blaster like this and a bearing scar nowadays. It's pretty fun. And just to show off the FPS with the triple spacer. Two twenty three, two twenty seven, two seventeen, two thirty two, two thirty six. Now that's with the um, Dart Zone Pro darts that get a decent amount of FPS higher than a lot of other darts and a lot of blasters. Let's try a few worker darts. Should be lower FPS, but still pretty decent. So from 170 to 190 with the worker darts, the Gen 3s, Dart Zone Max darts through it. Let's see what it does. One eighties, one nineties again. So <laughs> getting a almost 50 FPS increase using these darts. And they're the ones I was shooting the cups with, so the lighter darts aren't necessarily less accurate. The range might have a little bit of issues. I suspect that the worker darts going 180 and these darts doing 230 are going to get about the same range. Because the worker darts are just going to slow down a little less over range. But I would need a much larger basement to test that out. <laughs> Alrighty. That's the cup I shot in the intro. Ended up in the dark catch with a big old dent in it. <laughs> so it's been a while. Um, I wanted to get back into doing YouTube videos, but motivation has been a huge problem. But I want to get back into it and figured I'd start with something a little easy, something that I've seen a lot of people have problems with. I really like the try-on, and um, I had issues with the catch, and I've seen a lot of other people have issues with it. So just a little tutorial seemed like a good warm-up video to get back into things. Got a couple cool projects that I want to share and a couple cool blasters to take a look at. And uh, I think you'll be seeing more videos from me pretty soon.
let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to take a look at specifically or or anything you want to see from the channel any feedback and one other question is if i set up a patreon would anybody be interested in supporting me there because motivation and money have been a major problem for me lately and i think that would help quite a lot so um tell me what you think of that idea got a lot of cool projects that i'm going to be sharing in the future and i hope you guys tune into that so thanks for watching definitely won't be another year before you see me again and this has been curious reminding you to have fun